stories tonight in Y News. Parts of northern Luzon placed under signal number one as tropical depression Neneng slightly intensifies. Prosecutors do not recommend bail for Juanito Jose Remulia III due to the amount of high-grade marijuana or cush recovered from him. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority eyes the return of motorcycle lanes on Commonwealth Avenue in Quezon City by November. World's first Ghibli theme park to open in Japan on November 1. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Friday, October 14, 2022. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am William Theo. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News & Rescue social media channels. First in the news. The Cagayan Provincial Government extends its red alert status in preparation for Tropical Depression Neneng, while residents in the town of Alacapan feel fear for, for their livelihood. From Claveria, Cagayan, Asher Kadapan Jr. tells us why live. Yes, uh, Asher, good evening. Go ahead. Good evening, Will. Thousands of residents are usually affected even with just torrential rain here in Cagayan province. In fact, uh, despite downgrading the tropical depression Mai Mai to a low pressure area earlier this week, it still affected over 8,000 families or almost 32,000 individuals across the area. These are from 14 local government units affected by flooding with a fraction of the incidents due to Cagayan River overflow. With this, the Cagayan Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office ensures safety of the public. Pre-disaster risk assessment was also done today. We lifted the red alert. We transitioned from May May to TV. Neneng. Kaya nga po, uh, may pre-disaster risk assessment tayo uh, para malaman natin kung may mga stockpile pa yung mga local government units natin. The local government of Alacapan, Cagayan, on their part, closely coordinates with concerned barangay officials for awareness and preparedness from the threat of another typhoon. Hardly hit by TD Mai Mai, they worry that another typhoon may further destroy their rice crops, where most farms depend on for their livelihood. Tanatin natin na merong ilog kasi dyan na... Gaya nga ng uh, lagi kong sinasabi, yung ilog na yan, talagang kailangan na ng rehabilitation. Mababaw na po. Yan po ay kukonekta sa, sa Cagayan River. Will Alacapan Mayor uh, Harry Florido appeals to the national government to help them with the rehabilitation of Cagayan River to finally end the flooding in the town. That's it for tonight. But back to you, Will. Yes, uh, thank you, Asher Kadapan Jr. reporting live from Claveria, Cagayan. <music> Tropical cyclone Neneng slightly intensifies as it nears the northern Luzon. The tropical depression was last spotted 795 kilometers east of Calayan, Cagayan, is now packing. Maximum sustained winds of 55 kilometers per hour and gustiness of up to 70 kilometers per hour. It is moving west-southwest at a speed of 10 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone wind signal number one has been raised over Batanes, Cagayan, including Babuyan Islands, part of Apayao, particularly Luna, Santa Marcela, Flora and Puntol, and parts of Isabela, particularly Santa Maria, San Pablo, and Makunakon. Based on Pagasa's forecast track, Neneng would continue moving to the northern waters of Cagayan Valley, 
crossing several islands within Batanes and Babuyan Islands. From Saturday afternoon to Sunday afternoon, moderate to heavy rains with the times intense rains may be felt over Batanes, Cagayan, including Babuyan Islands, Apayao, Abra, Kalinga, Ilocos Norte, and Ilocos Sur. Pagasa warned that these conditions might cause flash floods in low-lying areas and landslides near mountain slopes. Neneng is expected to exit the Philippine Area of Responsibility or PAR by Monday. Meanwhile, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. assured the public that he is closely monitoring the developments on Tropical Depression Neneng. He said that relief goods are already being repositioned for families that might be affected by Tropical Depression Neneng. President Marcos also advised the public to stay alert. Uh, it looks a little stronger than the previous one at doon mas, uh, mas northern ang kanyang track. So nakabantay kami ng mabuti but once again, uh, I think the key to all of this is to watch it very closely because may bagong feature ang mga bagyo ngayon. Yung, kung naalala ninyo, yung carding uh, was a typhoon signal number one. Within ilang oras lang, naging five na, four, five mabilis mga mag-develop kaya kailangan nakabantay tayo ng husto so that's what we are doing DOSD Pagasa appeals to the public to help them secure their data gathering instruments the agency reported that cables solar panels battery rains and water gauges were among those stolen to protect these instruments Pagasa has already coordinated with the local govern government and the PNP those found guilty of stealing will spend 12 to 15 years in prison and pay a fine of 1 to 3 million pesos. Sana ay tumulong ang bawat isa na protektahan ito para po uh, makapagbigay tayo ng mas wasto at tamang uh, impormasyon base dito sa mga datos na kinukuha nitong mga instrumento na ito. The National Power Corporation has warned that a 12.5 billion pesos budget reduction for the agency's proposed budget for 2023 may cause more power outages. Eileen Sterudo will tell us why. There won't be funds for the subsidies needed by the National Power Corporation or NAPOCOR's new power providers and qualified third-party providers due to the budget reduction of 12.5 billion pesos. NAPOCOR said during the budget debate in the Senate that this would result in power outages for more than 834,000 households nationwide. Muntik po akong nahimatay dito dahil po sabi niyo magkakaroon ng... Uh, mapuputol ang kuryente sa mga lugar sa, sa kalahatian uh, taon next year. At nakakalungkot po ito. According to NAPOCOR, the budget initially proposed was 44.749 billion pesos. The agency urged the Senate to reinstate the original corporate operating budget proposal. NAPACOR's Budget and Program Review Department Manager Janeline Tinonas explained 278 power plants might shut down in July 2023 due to the lack of funding. This would affect over 450,000 households in the country. Scheduled energization will also not push through in 44 unserved areas. There will be a deferment of scheduled energization of 44 new unserved areas affecting 15 areas in Luzon, 14 in Visayas, and fifth, another 15 in the Mindanao area. This will compose of a 30,940 total households in the remote islands. There will also be a deferment of procurement spare parts and equipment for the preventive maintenance of small power utilities group power plants. According to Tenonas, they would need to augment the 2023 budget upon available of any additional funding sources. Eileen Cerudo, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Kherson residents are getting help from Russia to evacuate and protect themselves from airstrikes. Ia Davera will give us the details why live.
Yeah. Jonah, as military fight intensifies in Kherson region, Russia urges civilians to evacuate and move to a safer place to avoid rocket attacks coming from Ukrainian army aiming to retake the, the southern Ukrainian region. The Russian-installed leader of Ukraine's southern Kherson region, Vladimir Saldo, is encouraging residents to save themselves by going to Russia or Crimea and ask for Moscow's help. Saldo added on Thursday Day that many towns in Kherson region were now being attacked by U Ukrainian military, hammering the region with daily airstrikes that causes serious damage. To back up Mr. Saldo's appeal, Russian Deputy Prime Minister Marat Kusnulin announced that Russian government has decided to organize assistance for the travel of Kherson residents to other regions of the country. He added that free accommodation will be provided if necessary. Meanwhile, Ukraine has said as of said as of last week it had retaken 2,400 square kilometers in Kherson that was previously captured by Russian forces. Ukraine government also denies the accusations of targeting its own civilians. Back to you, Jonah. Thank you, Ia, for that live report. National Health Service in England are being faced with huge pressures as numbers of patients reach a record high waiting for their treatment. From London, United Kingdom, here's Anna Lima to tell us the details live. Anna? Yes, Jonah, the National Health Service, or NHS in England, has hit a record high of 7 million patients currently waiting for treatment. Patients with serious conditions are facing the longest waits for care. This is due to figures showing a significantly higher activity than pre-pandemic. Last month, only 40% of patients were discharged when ready, which meant 13,305 beds were taken up by patients who no longer needed to be in the hospital. As a result, the performance of emergency departments worsened while dealing with only 56.9% of patients within four hours, however the target being 95%. The Shadow Health Secretary Wes Streeting stated, 12 years of conservative understaffing of the health service is holding our economy back, with patients unable to work while they wait. You can't have a healthy economy without a healthy society. Jonah? Thank you, Anna. Reporting live from London, United Kingdom. Thousands of residents in parts of Victoria are under evacuation orders as flooding hits the second most populous Australian state. The floodwaters in Victoria are yet to peak, but has so far flooded around 500 homes and isolated another 500, while more than 4,800 homes and businesses are also left without power, with the largest group in Apollo Bay. Speaking at the State Control Centre today, State Premier Daniel Andrews said these figures will certainly grow next week, particularly in areas along Goldburn River and Seymour to Shepparton. In response, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese says the federal government is ready to provide further assistance to Victoria, as well as to South Wales and Tasmania, who are also experiencing major flood emergencies. We'll share more global stories with you later, but for now, back to you, William. Yes, uh, thank you, Giona. A political analyst believes that Secretary Jesus Crispin Remulia should resign from his post after his 38-year-old son was arrested in a by-bust operation in Las Piña City on Tuesday morning. The National Union of People's Lawyers, meanwhile, says the case is a test to the country's justice system. Dante Amento explains why. Ramon Casiple, a political analyst, explained why the incident involving Department of Justice Secretary Crispin Rimulia's son would lead to ongoing uncertainty about him as justice chief. 
According to Kasiple, Rimulia should resign as a result, especially because he is in charge of an organization that carries out prosecutorial matters. As Justice Chief Kasiple said, Rimulia should have the integrity to be impartial. SOJ Rimulia earlier said that he will not lift a finger to intervene in the case of his 30-year-old son who was arrested Tuesday morning in a bypassed operation in Las Piñas City. Meanwhile, the National Union of People's Lawyers suggested that President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. considers whether he will continue to trust Rimulia. Mag, mapagkakatiwalaan mo ba ang isang alter ego? Ang Secretary of Justice ay alter ego ng presidente na maipagpatuloy ang trabaho niya, lalo na sa, dito sa justice. According to Attorney Christina Conti, there is already a conflict of interest due to the event concerning Rimulia's son. Siya ay ang Secretary of Justice, siya ang pinakapinuno ng lahat ng prosecutor sa Pilipinas. Kaya ang magpo-prosecute o yung abogadong magkakaso tungkol dito ay galing sa DOJ at siya ang chief. Um, may prosecutorial discretion na tinatawag at maaaring babaan ang kaso. Meanwhile, the Las Piñas City Prosecutor's Office filed a case against Juanito Jose Rimulia III for alleged possession of dangerous drugs. Under the law, Rimulia could face the penalty of life imprisonment and a fine ranging from 500,000 pesos to 10 million pesos. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. rejected calls for Justice Secretary Crispin Boying Rimulia to resign from his post after his son was arrested in a massive drug bust in Las Piñas City. The president also dismissed calls for him to order prosecutors to drop the drug charges against former Senator Laila de Lima. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. I think the calls for him to resign are no basis. Uh, you, you, you call for somebody to resign if he's not doing his job or that they have... Uh, misbehave in, in that job. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. said calls for Justice Secretary Jesus Crispin Rimulia to step down from his post following his son's arrest for drug possession have no basis. Juanito Jose Diaz Rimulia III, the elderly son of the secretary, was detained in Las Piñas City for possessing more than 1 million pesos worth of high-grade marijuana or kush. According to PBBM, the DOJ chief is quite aware that he must allow the judiciary's processes to work properly and that no one in the executive should interfere. He added that the justice chief had adopted the quite proper position by recusing himself from any involvement in the case of his son. Meanwhile, President Marcos Jr. emphasized that if he asked government prosecutors who work under the executive branch to drop cases against former Senator Laila de Lima, he will be negotiating with the judiciary. I think urging prosecutors to do one thing or another is interfering. Uh, so that's why we, we uh, I, I have said, we, we are very, very clear that we have the uh, three departments of government. At uh, siguro naman, uh, hindi natin dapat, eh, pabayaan natin, hindi naman natin pinagdududahan ang proseso eh. This is despite the fact that De Lima herself made the Twitter plea to President Marcos asking him to direct the Justice Department to stop preventing Rafael Ragos, one of the prosecution's key witnesses against her, from taking the stand again after recounting. Meanwhile, the President recalled his conversation with De Lima, claiming that he had spoken to the latter to ensure her safety. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. 
The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority hopes to reopen exclusive motorcycle lanes on Commonwealth Avenue in Quezon City by November. J.P. Nunez will tell us why. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, or MMDA, is likely to address road accidents on Commonwealth Avenue in Quezon City. According to their data, in 2021, there are more than 26,000 accidents involving motorcycle. May increase in the volume of cars in our major roads, but also there's an increase in vehicular accidents, particularly among motorcycles in our major roads. And because of that, um, Shempre, this road scheme is really the primary um, consideration is the road safety. To reduce motorcycle accidents on a road dubbed as Killer Highway, the MMDA intends to implement a motorcycle exclusive lane in the stretch of Commonwealth Avenue by November this year. So it is the goal, sana po for Chairman, na either November or December po. Mm -hmm. Naipapatupad na po yung bagong road scheme of Commonwealth Avenue. The MMDA plan is to create an exclusive motorcycle lane on the third lane of Commonwealth Avenue. While the second lane will be for public transportation, the outer lane will be for bicycle, and the rest of the inside lanes will be for private and other vehicles. The scheme will still be presented to the Metro Manila Council at their next meeting. If the council agrees, the MMDA will conduct a three-day dry run of the new lane scheme for public awareness. The agency will also improve its physical apprehension to ensure that motorists continue to obey the law while the contact apprehension policy is still in effect. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Social Security System has announced that its accredited collecting partners will charge a service fee for every payment transactions. Accredited collecting partners of SSS including GCash, PayMaya, Bank of the Philippine Islands or BPI, Robinson's Bank Corporation, Security Bank Corporation, Union Bank of the Philippines, Altpaynet and CIS Bayad Center Incorporated. In an advisory, the state-run agency said the service fee will take full effect on December 21 and the amount will depend on the SSS collecting agent. Social Welfare and Development Secretary Erwin Tulfo agreed that there is a need to review the Four Peace or the Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino Program Law. Janice Ingente explains why. Following the Commission and Audit's report on the Pantawid Pamilyang Pilipino Program or 4Ps, which revealed that despite receiving cash grants for 7 to 13 years, 90% or 3,820,012 of the program's 4,262,439 active household beneficiaries are still below the poverty line. During the Senate Finance Committee hearing on the DSWD's proposed 2023 budget, Senator Amy Marcos questioned if the condition cash transfer program is effective in alleviating poverty. Kaya pinagtatanong dito sa Senado, sulit ba itong programa natin ng 4 Ps? I think it's time we revisit the 4 Ps uh, seriously because the government has spent so much and uh, so far the only proven fact is that it helps in transient or short-term poverty but has not actually established itself as a pathway out of poverty. According to Social Welfare and Development Secretary Erwin Tulfo, the COVID-19 pandemic affected the four peace beneficiaries' quality of life. And hindi na po ika nga uh, effective of valid yung sinasabi ng listahan ng three na 1.3 million ay graduate na okay. ay uh, kaya ng tumayo sa sariling paa. Because of the fact we have pandemic. Pero, uh, natapos, Madam Chair, uh, I'm sorry, ma'am. Yes. Uh, natapos po yung listahan ng 2019. Nagka-pandemic po tayo ng 2020 and 2021. Therefore, wala naman ho siguro yumahaman during pandemic. So we have to take them back. Tulfo, however, declared that because they are only carrying out the law, 
he will leave it to the judgment of the lawmakers. He agreed as well that it is required to review the poor peace provision to estimate whether the seven years effectiveness date is still applicable to the beneficiaries. Ang problem din ho na kailangan ho siguro i-revisit ng ating po mga mambabantas yung effectivity date po nito. So kung iperang tinitignan ho namin yan, ang effective date po is 2019. So kung ikaw ay nandyan noong 2020 pa, tuloy-tuloy hanggang 2026, ikaw ay nariyan noong 2025 dahil yun po ay maglalaps yung 7 years mo. Meanwhile, some senators are also planning to change some four-piece program provisions to center it on the supplemental feeding program and employment or skill setting. Janice and Hente, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Over 5 billion fans worldwide are expected to throw away as waste or hoarded in homes by the end of this year, which concerns environmentalists if not recycled. Mavi Vidalfine will tell us why live. Mavi? Jaina, with billions of phones hypothetically stacked on top of each other, it is said to measure 50,000 kilometers larger than the International Space Station. Mobile phones contain hazardous components, but also other valuable materials, including gold, copper, and silver, which are recyclable. However, phones which are to be thrown away will be incinerated, raising concern as it would lead to environmental and health issues. And with no recycling, the Director General of the WEEE forum, Pascal Leroy states that rare materials will be mined instead in China or Congo. Mobile phones are the most environmentally concerning but are just the tip of the iceberg as electronic waste worldwide amounts to 44.48 million tons. Meanwhile, according to a 2022 survey from six countries in Europe, a majority of the billions of phones will be hoarded in homes instead of being thrown away. Gianna? Thank you, Mavi, for that live report. The world's first theme park in Japan, featuring the famous studio Gilby, will open to public next month. Cherie's Long Bowen will tell us live. Cherie's. Good evening, Jona. Starting November 1, visitors can now come to the 7.1 hectare Ghibli Park, a theme park named after the world famous Japanese animation film studio Ghibli. The park is situated inside the 194 hectare park where Aichi Prefecture hosted the 2005 International Expo in Japan. Only three areas will be open to public initially the Hill of Youth, Dontoka Forest, and the Ghibli's Grand Warehouse, which has the largest space and features 14 sets from 13 Ghibli classics. Entry tickets for adults range from 1,000 to 2,500 yen, and child fares will be half the price of the adults. The Sand Park, which took 34 billion yen, or around 232 million US dollars to build in five years and five months, will hopefully be a major tourist attraction in Aichi Prefecture, with an estimated 1.8 million visitors per year once all the areas in the park are open, and annual economic impact of around 48 billion yen. Director Goro Miyazaki, the one who supervised the creation of Ghibli Park and the son of one of Studio Ghibli's founders, Hayao Miyazaki, said that the park had been designed to have minimal impact on nature. Back to you, Jiona. Thank you, Cherise Lung Bowen, for that live report. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Giona Pravado, live from London, United Kingdom. Good evening. Cookie Monster, the beloved blue puppet from Sesame Street, known to love cookies, revealed his name in social media. In the character's Twitter page, Cookie Monster has introduced himself as Sid, which stunned some fans. However, Cookie Monster already revealed his name in an episode in 2004. He mentioned his name through a song the first time, Me Eat Cookie. 
During his previous tweets, he also said that his full name might be Sydney. But whether his full name is really Sydney, Cookie Monster surely still remains in the hearts of the public. Our Kasang Bahay, as the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity. Good day. I'm Brother Eli Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. While safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament, there is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention. And we need His intervention now more than ever. It doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong. This is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family, friends, loved ones, and humanity as a whole. Everybody is welcome to pray with us. For more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much, and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. Before we close, we will leave you with a word giving glory to God from the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 15. It says, See that none render evil nor for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. And those are the reasons behind the news, October 14, 2022, reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am William Theo, because we need to know, we will always ask why. We serve the people, we give glory to God.